Hello everybody. So uh, I'm at my desk in the studio today. Uh, so before I start, thank you so much for all of the new uh, likes and subscribes and comments on my videos. I really appreciate it. So uh, please keep them coming. Um, what I wanted to do today was quite a few weeks ago now, I shared uh, some of the sketchbooks and journals that I work on as I'm developing my paintings. And this year, obviously, I'm developing a body of work about the landscapes that surround me. And I shared quite generally quite a few sketchbooks. And at that point, quite a few of you mentioned that it would be really useful if I just focused on one uh, journal sketchbook and uh, went through it in a little bit more detail. And most recently as well, I have been working quite a bit in one of the particular sketchbooks, which is my Moreland sketchbook. And so what I thought I would do today is to go through that and share with you the sorts of things that I incorporate into my journal sketchbook and um, how that fits with my paintings, really. So uh, in a minute, so what I probably should say before I, I turn around and, 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 sh and show you is that I, as you know, I'm working on uh, a few different sorts of sub-subjects, if you like, within the landscape arena for my uh, body of work. I'm working on moorland, I'm working on woodland, I'm working on what I call edgelands um, and, and so on, and, and, and the valleys in between. So I have sketchbooks for each of those subject areas. So what I thought I would do is just to go through one particular journal sketchbook because they are somewhat similar in terms of the, 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 the types of things I include. Um, and I'm going to go through that uh, and so you can see where I'm up to and the sorts of things that get incorporated. OK, so I'm going to turn around now and put the camera over the desk. And just before I, I get going, this is my uh, Moreland sketchbook. These are 19 centimetres square, chunky, sea white uh, sketchbooks or journals which I find really helpful they've got lovely uh, thick uh, cartridge paper in them and as you can see I kind of paint the, the covers so I gesso them and then I paint them and there is a video on the channel which I'll put into the comments uh, where I show you how I paint uh, the, the covers so I'm going to get going so here we are here's the uh, sketchbook and I'm just going to go through it page by page I just have to be a bit mindful of the time, so I might speed a little bit, but um, hopefully uh, you'll be able to go back and forth if you miss bits. So I always put on the front uh, page uh, a quote, and this one on the inside is my favourite quote actually, so I'll just read that one out, and that was the one I found after I'd already started the book. And uh, it comes from a book uh, called uh, The Moor by William Atkins, and it is, um, the, st the quote is, it is human nature to stand in the middle of a thing, but you cannot stand in the middle of this. And that's um, by Marianne Moore, um, a poem called The Graveyard. And uh, that is actually about the sea, but equally it applies obviously to the moors. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of leaf through uh, these pages. These first pages actually was when I was going out and about doing very small uh, three minute studies. And then they, they were cut up and put into, into the sketchbook actually. And there is a video where I actually uh, did that process. So, and show you how I collected the information out and about. So again, like I said previously, we're putting um, and it's some information uh, in the notes. So I'll put that uh, link as well into the notes for that video. And then this um, is a kind of like a zoomed in version of one of these actually of a particular uh, piece of land that I was interested in on Marsden Moor. But um, as I say, I haven't developed work from that. And then this actually was uh, when the heather was in flower and using uh, something that I don't often use when I'm out on location these days, which is watercolour and inks. Um, and then it's re been reconfigured. And then these are just straight studies that were done out and about uh, with views of the moor um, from, from a particular location local to me. And I've used a mix of acrylic paint and uh, Indian ink and mixed media. So there's nothing particular about those, although I did start to put them into here, into this uh, book. Now, what I should probably say as well is that 
Uh, I don't, I do a lot of studies on location. Not all of them get into the sketchbook. Sometimes it's just practical. I just put them in so that I don't lose them. At the moment, I have a lot of studies that I have got on my wall that I use as inspiration for my paintings. And you will have seen that when I, I talked at the beginning of the video. Those ones are probably going to be on display. So I don't really want to cut those about, put them into my journal because I actually want to uh, be able to show process in the exhibition that I am having at Gallery Oldham early next year and early spring. And the, the exhibition will be called Landscape Inside Out. And that will have uh, quite a lot of information on the process and my working drawings as well as the finished paintings. So those were just studies done on location. Uh, they were done in the late summer. So then here, this is where I started using uh, different ways of mark making to explore uh, the patterns and the lines and the textures and basically the marks of the landscape that I was interested in. And that was done last year and I was using indigo pastel and compressed charcoal. And these are just photographs um, that, uh, they're not photographs, they're scan. I, I, I photographed them using my phone and then I printed out some more so that I could put them into my sketchbook, just really so that I could analyze them. I do quite a lot of this and you'll see it further on in my sketchbook where I've done it. And so these are just uh, studies done with, uh, as I say, compressed charcoal and indigo. And then I'm just uh, talking about the process, talking about what I've used and the materials. What that's really useful for is oftentimes you might do some work and then you leave it alone for a while and then you come back to it. And so it's really important that you remember some of the details. So I find my journal sketchbook a really valuable resource for that actually. So this is a case in point. So this is Heather, the Heather Moores. So last year I started the Heather Moores paintings and then a year later I've come back to them and evolved them and changed them quite considerably. So last year this was my colour palette. Unfortunately, I kept a lot of detail of how I'd done it. So these are just little tiny swatches. Um, these are the colours that I've used and at the time I was using ultramarine, I was using lemon yellow. Subsequently, I changed the palette quite considerably but it was very useful to have this as a start point. And what I realised was that my colours were too cool. Um, there was something missing with them compared to my experiences this year. So these were photographs taken of some early, early uh, work paintings that are now still evolving. The numbers that you see are that I number all of my paintings. And so I have a whole spreadsheet of the numbers of the paintings with the details of what they're on and what they are. And then once I come up with names, that goes on to the same spreadsheet. So that's what the numbers are, so that I keep a tabs of all my paintings. So then what I have been interested in for a long time as part of my collage work is calligraphy and using text in the work. Now, for a while I wasn't using any and now and then Last year, I subsequently started exploring the different ways I could I could incorporate text, whether it was graffitio, whether it was uh, wax resist, whether it was ink pen um, and di uh, or dip pen and inks, whether it was stenciling, whether it was a typewriter and so on. So I explored this and I just wanted to keep them somewhere uh, safe and so that therefore they went into my into my uh, sketchbook so that's what these are and interestingly when I was looking through this the other day it gave me the idea to actually incorporate some contrasting text I already had text in some of my paintings and I wanted to put some contrast in and I um, have been using a stencil so it's all all you know useful stuff so then what I did was, and this is kind of going chronologically really, this is all chronological. So now we get to the winter. So this is the, not this coming winter, obviously last winter. So from late, um, from, from sort of like the end of the year onwards, um, I started to look at the moorland. But if you remember at that time, it's certainly in the UK, we were in lockdown. So um, I was coming up with words for what I could see of the moors. Um, but those uh, moors I could see were from a distance. I live in Mosley, which has wonderful views that make it feel quite close to the moors. And so I was relying on the views I had from the residential streets across to the moors. 
And these different words, I often write descriptive words for the subjects I'm interested in because they help me to make appropriate marks and uh, brush strokes on the paintings and in the drawings. And so you can see here, exaggerated, bold, dark, tentative, scratchy, spidery, sinuous, splattered, grainy, and so on and so forth. And then here um, I have got my colour descriptions of what I could see. And this is just a repeat of that. I stuck it on the wall, so I won't really go through that. And then this is the colour swatch that I was using. And then subsequently, I've been I worked on these big canvases, three big canvases, what I call glimpses. And I've come up with different names now for these paintings, but um, they're glimpses of the moors from afar. And I was using uh, these much uh, cooler colours. And this particular blue is an indigo paint. And this painting actually changed considerably. And what I, I often do is I put images in here of the photos of the, of the paintings as they are. And then I evolve them in sketchbook and make changes. So this one I wasn't at all happy with and it changed dramatically. Actually, it doesn't look anything like that now in the finished state. But this is just an examples of how I just use, uh, in this case, I actually used um, not watercolour paint, but gouache, um, which is more opaque, um, to just make these interventions examples of what I could do. Um, and then I'm writing here, simplify and emphasise. Um, so this is a really uh, something I do a lot of. I um, analyse the paintings, I work out what I think is working, what isn't working and so on. And that's just one of the three that I worked through using um, this sort of approach of, of uh, doing different changes and, and using some simple paint and pencil uh, on the, in the sketchbook. So then these are uh, more studies of the colours uh, that I wanted to come up with. And I should say that when I was doing the winter moors, not only did I look at those um, views from a distance, the glimpses, but I was also interested in um, an experience I had before the pandemic hit at the end of 2019 in uh, actually on location. I was I was walking on Marsden Moor and I had great memories of that. Unfortunately, I was able to do a drawing in colour, even though it's freezing cold. And this is the colour palette that I developed from that experience. And these are just this is an alternative. It's the same colour palette, but with a different background. So hopefully you can kind of see that. And then this is the original as a copy of the original drawing that I had in a smaller sketchbook. And that formed the basis of a group of paintings about my experience on Mars de Moor done from memory. And that's a part of it. And this is what this is. So again, this is another way I do things instead of having doing photographs, uh, printing out photographs um, on the printer. I just do simple studies, especially if I'm looking at composition and then I analyse them and try and work out how to improve them. And again, you can see the numbering and this is the, um, these are the, the paintings that are pretty much finished at this stage. So just so you can see how I kind of work things out. And then at that point, and um, I left this book alone and went on to some other subjects. And then subsequently, in the last uh, month or so, uh, I have started to look back again at the Heather Moors and really then evolve and develop those paintings that I made a start on last year. And uh, these are, again, going back to words for the summer moors. And there's probably quite a lot of crossover with the words from the winter moors. But I just wanted to do this as a start point and um, then I've starred some of them which is the line kind of descriptions and the pluses are the shape kind of descriptions. Um, and then I started looking at the colour palette. Uh, firstly as I usually do describing the colours and then coming up with them. And what I did is I subsequently changed the palette from what it originally was way back um, there changed it quite a lot to that. And uh, I think you can see there's warmer yellows, um, the, the blues more, uh, I use Pathalo as opposed to the um, ultramarine blue and so on. And this was what the very clunky paintings that have early on developed, they don't look anything like that now, completely changed. But I put these in here, I've put awful and ringed it, but then 
you know, that's all very well and good, but what does that really mean? So I then wrote a, a load of things about what was wrong with them. Too flat, too blocky, too mare, <laughs> not enough color variation, especially amongst the lights, also too wishy-washy, not enough mark making variety. So there's, anyway, there's a whole catalog of, of issues. But I also um, wrote some descriptions here about what I was doing, got started on these, these panels again. Um, I'm in the middle stages. Um, these middle stages are very difficult. And then I've written myself to remind myself, things to remember at this stage. It's supposed to look raw, messy, ugly, unfinished. That's the stage it's at. Work on a panel for a limited time then move on. That's the point of a series. <laughs> so I'm writing myself these reminder notes. And this is um, a revisited colour palette that is actually evolved from that one. And um, this is where I'm at now with the colour palette. So this is interesting, isn't it? How you, you evolve. There's lots more warmth in the yellows. Um, I've come up with more variety. Um, I've come up with a bit more of a desaturated purple. Um, I've been looking at how what happens when you put more blue in or more red in and the effects that you get. So I've kind of sort of started to explore the palette more, which is important, I think. And then more notes about what I really like about the Summer Moors. And this is where I'm at now, exploring, exploring what it is I want to get across in these paintings. This is this red grass that was on the moors that I was really keen to reflect somehow in the, uh, in, in the, um, some of Moore's paintings and really where I'm at now is this wonderful contrast that you get on the summer moors between the blocky chunky sort of fairly static heather um, and the really um, silky fine light attracting uh, grasses that really move in the breeze and so that's a lovely contrast between the golds and the yellows and the reds and this sort of lovely uh, rich colour. And then so what I've now done is quite a lot of studies um, and these studies are um, actually not on location, they're in the studio and I've been doing 10 minute meditations and doing longhand writing and then putting that all together. Um, and so this is just more exploration and more studies of the studies to develop the paintings. And that's really important for me, I find. So I did these with acrylic paint, same color palette on A3 paper, chopped them up to create squares. They help me to understand what it is I want to get across in my paintings. I've then done three minute studies um, using statements actually, um, partly description statements, um, that describe the shapes and partly that describe the lines. So I have three sort of areas of interest that I've kind of unraveled. One is about this layers of domes and lines of the heather and the grasses. One is about the pathways through with the heather as a kind of underskirt. And then the third one is about the slopes and the way things cut through. And then I started to look at, I've got some cropped photographs, but I don't really work from photographs. I started doing little drawings from them to understand what I was interested in. So that's pathways work. This is the layers work. And then I just want to finish by sharing with you this uh, uh, two little collages, which are all about these slopes intersecting and the heather moors that I'm interested in. And I'm actually working to work out how I graphically show and loosen up and show what I want to do, but not making it too literal. And it's not a single view and the marks are much more graphical and much more interesting. So this is where I'm kind of at now when I'm developing these paintings. Okay, so that's kind of a whistle stop tour through uh, the book as it is now. I hope you found that useful and uh, please do like and subscribe if you're not already and uh, make comments. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.